there are different ways for people to move around in virtual worlds. This is called locomotion, it's how we move in virtual reality. Teleportation is one of the main systems used. And the way that works is that you are on a certain location in the virtual world and then you look at a certain target. You um, look at a target or you can point at a target with a motion controller. Once you trigger an uh, activation of that target, you are then moved to that location. So you are in a different location in the map. There are two main ways of implementing teleportation. One of them is what I like to call fixed teleportation. It's where you have, when you have fixed targets, fixed points in your map, which can have different designs. They can even be like arrows. Um, and you only have a fixed number of points where you can move. These, the locations of these um, pods are set by the game developer or game designer. They have put these positions, these uh, points in different parts of the game world and you can only go to those locations. You can't explore freely, you can't really move around anywhere you want. The second type of teleportation is what I call free teleportation. And this is an example in a game called Arizona Sunshine, which is one of my favorite VR games. In this um, game you can you can point to anywhere on your on your map as long as it is within a certain distance of you. So you move your pointer, which in this case is used, is, uh, is um, activated with a motion controller, but you could have the same system activated with a uh, gaze-based input. So you could have this pointer coming out of your head-mounted display of your face, basically, and um, you are then able to move to those locations and they are not fixed positions like what you would have with fixed teleportation. Um, so a few more examples for you to, to see um, different implementations. So um, there's a, uh, another screenshot here that shows uh, some other design ideas. Then in the, in the lab, a game for the HTC Vive, you have something that looks like a ring that has a little bit of light coming out of it. Sometimes it is made as a square and it can also have that more um, cartoonish type of artwork as well. So there are different ideas out there that you can get from real games. We'll be implementing a system like this in our own game. It'll be a very simple system that you can easily drop into any Unity project and you can customize further. So let's go now and describe how this implementation will work. I'm going to bring in a note and make a bit of a sketch of how this will work. So we will be located, let's say here, and this is our head mounted display. And the system that I will implement, it, the, um, this pointer is going to come out of the, of the camera, of the head mounted display, but it could be easily moved into a controller as well. Basically, there will be a, a terrain in your level. So let's see, let's say that we have some, some trees and some elements, and we will have a, um, an area that I'm going to call a teleportation area. And there will be a maximum teleportation distance from my current positions. Uh, so I'm not able to teleport, say, all the way here to some other hills. I can only teleport a certain distance around me that is going to be set as a parameter. So whenever the, um, the a, a ray caster coming out of, in this case, my head mounted display, runs into this teleportation area and we are within the, the distance that we set, we will be seeing a, a uh, target there. And as we, move, as we look around, as we move our, our pointer, we will, we will have this uh, target following the, the gaze and we will also see a ray of light going to that position. Kind of similar to what you saw here although with a bit less detail. Um, then once we, once we click or we activate that, we, the player will be moved to that new position. And again, you, you are able to look around you and, and now you have a different area where you can move, so you can move a little bit further. 
And that is the basics of how this system will work. So it is a quite simple system and it is also uh, very powerful because it can be easily adapted and extended to any kind of uh, gameplay that you are after. Or you can also use other assets for the, the pods themselves and whatnot. So let's now go to Unity and start working on this implementation. I've already created a new project here. I've saved my, my scene and what I'm going to do now is just prepare a, a very simple environment here that we can use. So I'm going to start by adding a, uh, a plane for the floor and I'm going to position this in the origin. And let's give this plane a, a material color that is different than, than that white color. So I'm going to go here, create a new folder called this materials and add in here a new material, which I'm going to clear uh, called uh, floor material. And I'm going to give this just any, any color here, like a dark uh, green. And we are going to move that there. All right. So our camera itself, it's located somewhere else. I'm going to move this to somewhere on top of this plane. Um, so we are going to need to create a few scripts and we are also going to be bringing some external files. Now, what files are we going to bring? Um, our system will be based on Unity's standard assets, which is something that can be downloaded from the asset store and it is called VR samples. So if you search here, you'll find VR samples. And this is a package created by Unity that contains a lot of tools, including that iRaycaster, uh, something called iRaycaster, which is this um, th this raycaster that comes out of the head mounted display and hits the ground. And also it contains something called VR interactive item, which is what we'll use for the floor. Now I've already uh, installed this and I've already taken a few of the, uh, only some of the files from there because there are a lot of files and sample scenes and we don't really want all of that stuff. So I already have here a, a folder that I named VR standard assets and contains a few scripts here that are going to uh, be useful to us. So these are just the main files that I that I normally use. So I'm going to bring this folder into my project and also, what I have here is another folder called Zenva VR, which contains some tools that I've developed to help me work uh, with virtual reality. So I'm going to bring that in as well. And in fact, our free teleportation module uh, will be uh, created inside of this Zenva VR folder so that then we can we can keep this folder and use it in other projects too. All right, so I'm going to close this asset store. Um, so the very first thing that I'm going to do here is bring in a camera prefab that I have here. I think it's located here under Zenva VR prefabs. And this camera is, is really the same as the default camera, but it already has some scripts that are provided in the VR standard assets folder. It has the iRaycaster that I've, that I've been mentioning, and it has um, also the VR input, which is, uh, will allow us to uh, look at interactive items and activate a click, for example, and also a script called drag camera, which is something I use to move the camera with the mouse when I'm on the Unity editor. So what I'll do now is get rid of the main camera here. So I'm going to delete that and I'm going to drag my VR camera and place it in zero, give it a height of, let's say, 1.5. Okay, um, now in virtual reality, we never move the camera directly. We never move, change the camera's transform because that is something that the head mounted display does. The head mounted display takes over the camera transport, uh, whether it is for rotation or for position tracking, if, if that is um, present in your device. So when we want to move the player, and we will want to move the player once we teleport uh, them, we need to create an um, empty object and place a camera inside of the empty object. And it is the empty of uh, the, um, the containing object that is what we will be moving. So I'm going to go here and create an empty object and position that. I'm going to position this in, um, in zero. And I'm going to 
uh, move my VR camera inside of my game object that I created and I'm going to rename this to player. Okay, now if I go and press play, we have a we have a, a reticle and we are able to move around with the mouse. So that is a good starting point here. Um, so the very first thing that I, I want to do is uh, prepare this, this ground as an, a teleportation area. So I've got this here, it's called plane. And now I could go and use this same plane, but what I actually want to do is I want to separate the, the level details from the actual teleportation functionality. Because imagine instead of if instead of a plane, this is some other irregular shape, but I want my teleportation to be in a flat surface, for example, or I only want my teleportation to be enabled within some areas of this plane, not the whole plane. So I'm actually going to create a child object here, which is going to be another plane. And this one I'm going to call, um, I'm going to call this teleportation zone. And I'm going to rename this plane to ground. And I'm going to position this a little, just a little bit higher up so that we can see it. Um, so the teleportation zone is something that we only want to see on the editor. We don't want to see this zone in the game. As I mentioned, the ground could have uh, textures or other details, or it could even it could even not be a plane. And our teleportation zones are something that we are going to use in the editor to design our level, but we don't want them to be seen in the game. So what we can easily do is create a layer and place them in place them on a layer, and then have that layer hidden from the camera. So I've gone here to layers and I'm going to add a new layer, which I'm going to call teleportation zones. Um, so let's, let's make, uh, let's give that layer to our teleportation zone. And now let's go to our camera and make sure that that layer is not being seen. So in the camera, go to calling mask. And in here you can disable teleportation zones. So we don't see it in the game. We will see it on the editor. On the editor itself, we can give this a different material uh, other than white. And this will be called teleportation zone material. And I'm going to make this like some sort of bright pink or maybe a bit more something that doesn't um, that is a color that we are not really using in the game. So let's give it this color. And now we know that that color will represent these uh, teleportation areas. And now what else? I need to start working on a script that will actually allow me to, to, to draw the target and the, the, the line as well. So if you recall, we need to, we need to draw a target and also we want to have this, um, this, this ray towards that target. So, um, I'm going to go here to assets and create a new a new folder called script. We're actually going to create these things in separate folders and then um, you can then move them to Zemba VR and use that on a different uh, project. I think I prefer to keep these files separate from Zemba VR for now. In future courses, they might already be included in Zemba VR. So we'll take that approach. All right, so script, uh, let's rename it to scripts. And uh, in here, I'm going to create a new script, which is going to be called teleportation, tele uh, free teleportation zone. And I'm going to open that up in Visual Studio. So since we are going to be um, using our reticle or our eye raycaster to, to look at this area, we need to make it an interactive item. So I need to add here require component. And this is going to be a type of VR interactive item. And now we can see that that is not, uh, that gives me an error because we actually have to include here using VR standard asset dot utils. And that makes it possible for us to use this component in this way without having to type the full namespace. Um, we will be using this, uh, um, this component, so I'm going to create a variable for it, a private variable. 
this will be a VR interactive item. Let's call this VR item. And let's start by uh, getting rid of this. And I'm going to grab this on awake. Uh, I'm going to delete the private keyword. That's just my personal preference here. So VR item will be equal to get component. And the component is of type VR interactive item. Now that needs to be executed, of course. So this is our get um, interactive VR item uh, component. If we go back to Unity, uh, we can give this script, assign it to our teleportation zone by dragging it, dragging it onto that area. And we should already see now the VR interactive item script uh, added here because we've, we're using a required component. The required component attribute makes this happen automatically for us. Okay, um, now um, we will have to work on the different events that will activate or deactivate once when you look at this this region or when you look away. And that is something that we will do in the next video. So that's all for this lesson. I will see you in the next lesson and we'll continue implementing this and we'll make it possible for us to, to look at this area and see that target appearing and then looking away, the area the target should be gone and maybe we should have back our reticle. So there will be a bit of logic there and we'll be doing that on the next video.